It's Thursday, January 30th, 2020. Here's what's happening. Jamestown City Council calls on the state to revise its bail reform laws, plus the search for a new principal at Jamestown High School continues. The district's now asking for the public's input. The news at noon starts now. From the team that puts coverage first, this is your source for breaking news. WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. This week, lawmakers in Jamestown passed a resolution calling on New York State to revise its bail reform law. Jamestown City Councilman and former Jamestown police officer Jeffrey Russell, in an interview with WNY News Now, called on the state to reconsider the list of offenses that are part of the reforms. Someone can go out now and they can uh, be driving drunk in their vehicle and they can crash and kill someone and they can end up getting an appearance ticket and, and leave. Uh, so I guess it's a question of uh, what you consider uh, violent or not. I mean, crashing your car and killing someone because you're intoxicated, uh, to me, that's a violent action. Now, the councilman says since the reforms went into effect on January 1st, he's received a lot of feedback from residents who are concerned about public safety. Additionally, Russell feels that the reforms and what they specifically changed were kept quiet until the end of 2019, even though they were passed in the spring of last year. He says he is not specifically against reforming the criminal justice system, just that the state should look to adjust the current modifications that are in place. Now, state lawmakers originally overhauled the bail rules to address what they say was an unfair bias in the system against poor people. It remains unclear how or if lawmakers will amend the bail law. Leading Democrats, including Governor Andrew Cuomo and State Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins, have said they're open to changes. We'll see what happens. Meanwhile, New York State Senator George Borrello has been named the chair of the newly established Repeal Bail Reform Task Force. If you remember, Borrello first called out the state last year asking them to repeal the law. The task force will be collecting testimony on what Borrello says are the radical changes that were forced through by Democrats without any input from prosecutors, law enforcement officers, victims, local leaders, or even the public themselves. The task force is set to convene on February 6th in Buffalo with upcoming roundtables on Long Island, the Hudson Valley, and in Syracuse. Senator Brello was also named the Senate Standing Committee on Transportation and Civil Service and Pension. Well, in other news, two men are facing charges after the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office says they found them with meth and marijuana during a traffic stop early this morning. Deputies say that 31-year-old Christopher McNett of Brockton and 28-year-old Leroy Stepp Jr. of Westfield were pulled over after an alleged traffic violation on Lakeview Avenue in Mayville just before 5 a.m. McNett, the driver of the vehicle, allegedly provided deputies with a false name and date of birth. Through investigation, they were able to identify the man who had his driving privileges previously revoked due to DWI conviction. Both were charged with criminal possession of a controlled substance. McNett faces additional traffic-related charges the duo was processed and released with appearance tickets in the case. Well, Jamestown Public Schools are asking for the community's feedback as school officials search for a new high school principal. In a video released this week by the district, Superintendent Dr. Brett Athorpe invited the community to partake in a thought exchange survey that's posted on the district's website. The high school principal is a critically important job. And it's equally important that we have the feedback from our parents, staff, and students and community members on the qualities that they wish to see in a high school principal. Now, Athorpe says the online survey is posted at jpsny.org forward slash principal, and it will be open through Friday, February 7th. 
Now, in December, high school principal Dr. Rosemary Bradley resigned after teachers at the school overwhelmingly voted no confidence in her ability to keep students safe following a fight there. Current Jamestown High School assistant principal Dana Williams was appointed interim principal through June 30th, 2020. Well, hopefully everybody is uh, having a great day. We thank you so much for tuning in here on WNY News Now. Let's uh, pull up the comments here on Facebook Live and uh, see what's shaking. We got to say hello to Angela. Hopefully you're doing well. Hello to Lori. Uh, good afternoon to you. Hello to Renee. Hello to David. I uh, got to say hello to Rory and Pam and Scott as well. Thank you all so much for uh, watching us. And David says, hopefully you guys are enjoying this sunshine today. And let me tell you, it is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful day out there. Uh, Craig McFadden, he's standing in for our Dakota Hunter this afternoon. And uh, Craig, really the story seems to be that sunshine right now. Absolutely. Very sunny skies out there. Hi, everyone. My name is Craig McFadden. I am filling in for Dakota today. And I got that call just a little while ago that I had to fill in for Dakota today. And I was able to do the speed limit, wink, wink, up here. With no snow on the ground, no snow on the roads. We got a 33 degree, 33 degree day out today, and it's partly sunny, remaining cool throughout the day, and a quieter sunny afternoon. Now, let's take a look at what's happening later in the day as I figure out my clicker. There it is, what's coming up? It's gonna be drive through the rest of the week. The temperatures will fall uh, by Friday. A little bit of snow possible this weekend, but it'll be a little warmer at the beginning of next week. Back to you, Justin. Alrighty, Craig, thank you very much. Coming up, how a new law could help those with stolen identities, and later the life and legacy of a Western New York boy and his vision of helping others. Stay with us. Every cookie sold in the Girl Scout cookie program helps girls learn lifelong lessons in people skills, decision making, money management, goal setting, and business ethics. It's amazing how much you can learn from a cookie. The Girl Scout Cookie Program. Think outside the box. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading the WNY News Now mobile app. Stay up to date on local news, weather, and sports that matter to you. Plus, subscribe to breaking news and weather alerts from the team that puts coverage first. In addition, watch news as it happens with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network. Download the WNY News Now app right now. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And welcome back to WNY News Now. Congressman Tom Reed has introduced a bill to help make victims of identity theft get through their crisis. Reed says the bill would require the Social Security Administration to provide identity theft victims with a single point of contact within the agency when the measure of their Social Security numbers results in the need to them to resolve one or more issues with that group. The congressman says this makes the process of recovering a stolen identity less stressful because they'll keep the same contact with one person even though more than one call to the Social Security Administration might be made. An identical bill passed in the Senate earlier this month. In Albany, top state health officials were prepared with a series of questions by New York lawmakers over concerns that governors call to curb soaring Medicaid spendings could end up hurting residents' wallets. Democrat and Republican members of the legislature's fiscal committees 
used a Wednesday budget hearing to press the state commissioner of health, Howard Zucker, and the state Medicaid director, Donna Frescate, for more transparency about what has led to the soaring Medicaid costs that Governor Andrew Cuomo's administration failed to predict or disclose ahead of last year's budget. Now, the Democrat governor has yet to announce his plan for an appointed Medicaid redesign team, and he wants to task with finding a $2.5 billion savings ahead of the legislature deadline to pass their budget by April 1. Cuomo's team has said rising long-term care costs and his $15 minimum dollar minimum wage are uh, fueling soaring costs for Medicaid. The government health care program for people with low incomes, which serves one out of three New Yorkers. Now, advocate groups for Medicaid recipients and the state's health care industry warned lawmakers that Cuomo's sh- swift deadline doesn't leave enough time for a serious look at the impact of potential solutions from tax hikes on private insurance that could raise premiums to rethinking how the state and counties determine who's eligible for which Medicaid services to pushing more cost on counties. Well, nearly 200 American coronavirus evacuees from China are under strict monitoring in Southern California right now. They'll be checked for fever and other symptoms twice a day for at least three days as the World Health Organization weighs in on whether or not to declare a global public emergency. Mary Maloney has the latest. The coronavirus is spreading rapidly, we think, in China. Uh, We think it is appropriate that our citizens who are in the epicenter of that outbreak in Wuhan uh, be repatriated home for their own safety. American evacuees from the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak are now under evaluation at the March Air Reserve Base in Southern California, being kept away from other people in a separate part of the base. We are going to monitor them for the full extent of their incubation period. The evacuees were isolated on the plane, bringing them back. The way that this plane was put together, the upper level of the crew was completely separated from the lower passengers. So airflow, all sort of, every sort of um, interaction between the top and the bottom were completely isolated. More than 160 people in at least 36 states have now been investigated for possible infections by the CDC. So is the world on the verge of a global health emergency? On Thursday, officials at the World Health Organization will reconvene to consider declaring one. American health officials are now airing their concerns. This is a very serious and rapidly evolving situation. This is a potential public health threat in the United States. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. All right, Mary, thank you very much. Well, Craig, a new government report has found that the life expectancy right here in the United States has climbed for the first time in four years. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that life expectancy in 2018 was 78.7%. That an increase from 78.6% the year before. Researchers say a big factor for the jump is that drug overdoses fell in 2018, and it was 67,000, down from 70,000 in 2017. Another contribution was that cancer deaths dropped from 2.2% over that same period as well. Certainly uh, beats the alternative of... uh, death. But uh, yeah. I think that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people we, we talk about on the show, right. you know, being healthy, Absolutely. Um, but also living your life the way you are. I think that a lot of, a lot of people, especially in the comments are like, you know, sure, maybe I vape or maybe I smoke, but, or maybe I can like, in my case, right. It's always those potato chips, right. too many <laughs> potato chips, Justin <laughs> always seem to get me, but uh, nevertheless, it, it, you got to find a good balance. And you know what? I don't know if it's the new year or the resolutions or anything, but I've made some incredibly great health choices this year. Um, I quit soda. Uh, all together. I'm done drinking Good soda for all you. together. I haven't had a drink of soda in about a couple of months. And I also quit smoking. I'm done smoking. I actually had a surgery on, I had to get a tooth out. And of course, they make you stop eating and smoking and all of that stuff. Yeah. So I figured 
if I'm done smoking, maybe I'll just stop altogether.、So、Good for you. I think I'm on the right track. So good、far. for you. Wow, that's、Hopefully、that's great、working. to hear. Hopefully, I look okay on the suit.、Too. Yeah, you do. You look good. You look good. <laughs> so we we thank you so much for、uh, joining us, Dakota. Hopefully, we'll be back、uh, next week. So、um, and uh, we, we uh, are hoping to see him back here soon. But、uh, nevertheless, the the show always must go on.、Absolutely. And、uh, I think you, you've done a great job too, because this is your first time doing weather. <laughs> First time ever, ever doing weather.、Um, <laughs> pretty, pretty bear good. Bear with me, people. I, I, I do know what it looks like outside. It's sunny and nice, but but you do all do the it, big words Dakota uses. I don't. I'm not. <laughs> you do know. know a lot about sports. That's kind of your、uh, yeah. wheelhouse.、Um, and a, a big sports event coming up this weekend. This the Sunday,、too. I believe. There's、yeah. some sort of football game happening. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, and it's going to be nice. It looks like down there in Florida. Absolutely.、Uh, as usual, Miami is sunny and beautiful.、Um, it, we have the Super Bowl kickoff at six thirty p.m. The Forty Niners versus the Chiefs.、Um, doesn't look like there's going to be too much change in the weather at six thirty p.m. Right at kickoff. Sunny, partly cloudy, whichever one you want to call it. I like to call it mostly sunny. It's going to be sixty-six <laughs> degrees by halftime when J Lo and Shakira take the stage. It'll be sixty-four degrees, and by the fourth quarter, when undoubtedly the Forty Niners will be up by at least ten points, and the Patrick Mahomes will have to make a comeback. It'll be about sixty-two deg- degrees. So a great day for、um, a little bit of football on Sunday. And we'll get a look at what is going to be happening、um, today on our MetroCast. We got 1 p.m., 33 degrees, and it'll、um, reach the high later in the day, 34. And by late tonight, cooling down a bit to 28 degrees. So that is my first day doing weather. I had a great time,、um, and hopefully I'll be here again. But we want Dakota back soon.、Uh, back to you, Justin. Okay, I think you have the seven-day forecast and a couple other slides, right? What? Yeah, I, I'm just I'm just rushing right through this thing because probably because I'm nervous. But let's get a look at the seven-day forecast. Why don't Why don't we?、Uh, Thursday it'll be 33 degrees, and、uh, by Friday、uh, it'll be 34 with a low of 24. And what we're really looking at here is Monday and Tuesday. It's really going to warm up after it being kind of cool this weekend. I think now that I'm done, maybe. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank Now, you, Greg. Actually,、Greg. back to you, Justin. <laughs> Norm's here with a look at what's coming up next. Yes, Justin. But first, let's hope this halftime show for the Super Bowl isn't as terrible as the last few have been. Well, hope、oh, a lot of them have been bad lately. Anyways, up next, MLB spring training starts up in less than one month. We will tell you that and more when WNY News Now returns. <laughs> Speaking up for what's right, helping out when things go wrong, raising our voices alone or together—not just breaking news, but breaking barriers, fighting for victory on the battlefield and on the playing field, seeing the world through new eyes and the earth from miles above, redefining beauty. Brains and what it really means to be queen. Making ourselves heard on stage and on screen. Showing the way in Silicon Valley and showing up for others wherever help is needed most. Not just making our mark, but making a difference. Now that's a job for a Girl Scout. Girl Scouts preparing girls for a lifetime of leadership. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24/7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at PhoneZoneShop.com.
Happy Thursday, sports fans. We are nearing the end of the work week. Welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. On Wednesday night, the JCC Jayhawks men's and women's basketball teams had home games versus Mercyhurst Northeast for faculty and staff night. Both JCC teams walked away from their games with losses. The Lady Jayhawks lost their game 78-71 dropping their record to 8-10 on the season. For the men's game, JCC suffered an 81-65 loss, extending their losing streak to four games. In a few weeks' time, the New York Yankees will begin their 2020 spring training. Their first game of spring training will be on February 22nd versus the Toronto Blue Jays. The Yanks will then take on the Tampa Bay Rays on the 23rd, Pittsburgh Pirates on the 24th, then Toronto again on February 25th. New York will be one of 15 teams playing in the Grapefruit League of Spring Training with their home games in Tampa. In the final minute of the New York Knicks 127-106 loss over the Memphis Grizzlies yesterday night, an incident committed by Memphis sparked what could have been a melee. As you'll see in the video, Jay Crowder of the Grizzlies intercepted a bad pass from New York's Julius Randle dribbled to the right corner and attempted a three with a little over 48 seconds left in regulation. With New York down 18 at the time, Alfred Payton, the Knicks point guard, took exception to Crowder's shot and shoved them. The rest of the video speaks for itself. Payton and Marcus Morris Sr. of the Knicks were ejected, with Crowder being the only ejection from Memphis. Disciplinary action has yet to be executed by the NBA. That's it for sports today. Back to Justin and Craig. All right, Norm, thank you very much. Well, this week, the New York State Senate paused to mourn the loss of a, an 11-year-old Western New York resident who died due to complications of the flu. Senator George Brello took to the Senate floor to honor Luca Calinetti. Borello recognized the Western New York community for coming together and comforting his family and honoring Luca's life. The communities around Western New York lit up the skies in orange, which was Luca's favorite color. Buildings, restaurants, uh, people's homes were lit up with orange lights to celebrate his life. Also, they have started a foundation. Even though their grief is still fresh, they have started a foundation in Luca's name. This is because not long ago, Luca and his father attended the Buffalo Bills game in Pittsburgh. And as they were driving home, they stopped at a gas station. And Luca said to his father, please buy a lottery ticket. And if we win the lottery, I would like to start a foundation to help children who can't afford to go to events like this to be able to go and experience the things I've experienced in my life. This was a very, very wise young man. Now, the senator asked, his colleagues in the lawmaking body to consider researching the foundation and support it to honor the family and make sure Luca's dream comes true. Donations can be made to Luca S. Kalanenny Foundation, CO Summit Wealth Management Inc. That's at 35 West Main Street in Fredonia. We have details at wnynewsnow.com. Certainly uh, such a powerful uh, thing. And, and I, we always seem to talk about this, Craig, is the community here in Western New York, and I'm sure where you are from in Northwestern Pennsylvania, um, comes together uh, all the time. And it, it's just so incredible to see uh, how they support each other and how we as neighbors really, really rally together um, in some of the hardest times. And, and certainly like this, I, I would imagine so tough for, for his family. But to, right. to hear that story right. that he wanted to give back sort of as his final, you know, they, they didn't know he was going to become ill. Right. But just speaking with his father and saying, you know, I, I really enjoyed this football game. Let's see if we can't get other kids to get involved. Uh, that's amazing. And originally being from Western New York, um, originally from Rochester, I do know how tight knit a community is yeah. uh, as far as um, it being sort of a small town, right. but in a big city in a small town. You have that period. feel no matter where you are. Absolutely. Yeah. And even in the age of division, and we can see it throughout America and division stories like this, you kind of realize that we're not we're not that different right you know everybody wants kind of wants the same thing and, yeah and, but it's just different ways to get to it 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we uh, that God bless his family and uh, you know certainly uh, thank them for sharing to that story with us. It's uh, incredible. Uh, Lori uh, commenting a little bit earlier on the weather. She says, "I want to rush through the weather too, right into spring." And boy, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice if we could just just I take know, it all? I, I was I was ready. For, I'm ready for the weekend, even yeah. though it's Thursday. I was yeah. ready to skip right through and just get right back to you. Yeah. I felt like I was talking too long. Right, but <laughs> like you know, I mean, mid thirties. I mean, that's something that's kind of expected, right. certainly for this time of the year. So, uh, nevertheless. Uh, it, Hey, you know what? In Western New York, it is what it is. And, and you just uh, never know. You no, just never you know. never know. Never know, certainly. But hey, good work, Craig. We thank you so much for being it. here. That's going to do it for us today. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com. When you're on the go, stay in the know by downloading our mobile app. It's free on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. We leave you with a live look over Chautauqua Lake. Hopefully you can uh, enjoy some of that sunshine today. We're back tomorrow. Have a great day.